Thank you for the introduction and um, sincere apologies to the uh, audience that I changed the time with the uh, Professor Burns because um, um, I realized that today is my baby son's 100 days um, and birthday so I had to rush back home <laughs> so um, again I'm terribly sorry for the change. So today I'll talk about the uh, remanent submersions and the eigenforms of witten laplacian which I'm going to define pretty soon. So first um, I'm only considering the uh, closed manifold here. Um, so it's compact with a boundary and uh, I'm going to denote it y and z and um, the pi is a submersion from z to y so we have a um, covering manifold z up there and we have a base manifold down there and the pi is a submersion which means that um, push forward of this map pi from the tangent space of z to the tangent space of y is subjective for a point on the uh, uh, total manifold z. So vertical distribution is um, defined in terms of um, this push forward of pi, so which I'm going to denote by a curly vz. So that's the kernel of um, push forward of pi and horizontal distribution is also going to complement of that um, vertical distribution in tangent space of, of z. So vertical distribution is independent of choice of a metric but when we're doing the uh, also going to complement uh, that brings the uh, dependence of the metric. So horizontal distribution depends on the metric on z. So as I said, I'm going to decompose, well, from the definition that a tangent bundle Tz is direct product and direct sum of vertical distribution V and the horizontal distribution of H. And I'm going to call um, V upper star, H upper star to be the dual distribution of the uh, cotangent bundle T star Z. So, so that's the basic setup um, and uh, most of the stuff I'm going to talk about today is basically done by uh, Peter Gilkey and uh, his collaborators in back in the 90s and um, what I did was basically just Ipsilon improvement of uh, or the just I changed the uh, notation a little bit that I can talk about a little bit more of a general setting so that's what I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to quote um, give the definition of a remanent submersion. So pi is a remanent submersion if pi is a submersion and also um, is linear isometry. So what it means is that um, if you have something going on on the um, tangent space of base manifold on Y and that's exactly the same as what you're going to have on the horizontal distribution of the total manifold. So that's what it means by here that um, push forward or pi from the uh, horizontal distribution to the tangent space of y is a linear isometry for all points. So that's what it means. Basically everything going on the down under on z, uh, sorry, on y is exactly the same as what you have in the horizontal distribution. Okay. So um, notation. So I'm going to use a, b and c to index the uh, also number of frames, uh, small f a and the small f upper A um, for the horizontal distribution H and the uh, um, core distribution uh, horizontal part H star and the uh, capital F A and capital F A upper star to be uh, um, T Y which is going on down under and the T star Y okay and I J K again the uh, also number of frames E I and the uh, E upper I for the vertical distributions and is um, dual and I'm going to use the Einstein conventions and um, just a little a reminder that um, Christopher symbol say if you have some also number frame FA then you can write down in terms of the uh, um, Lie bracket. So Christopher symbol can be written half of G FA FB Lie bracket and FC and rest of terms just in a permute with the sign changes. Okay. Then I'm going to define the mean curvature covector which I wrote down as um, small theta here is minus gz and B bracket ei and fa and ei so just remind you that ei was the um, 
also my frame for the vertical distribution, and FA was the uh, a frame for the uh, um, horizontal distribution here. Okay, so so you just basically uh, permute those, and uh, in the direction of horizontal di distribution, F upper A, and that's if you just do the a little bit of a computation that you can write down that as in terms of Christopher symbol and F A. Okay, so this is um, what. Um, zero one vector, and um, that's in, in the uh, horizontal distribution. Okay. And next one is the uh, so-called integrability curvature tensor, um, omega. So omega is um, this is this is a scalar. Basically, it's not um, like a one form like a theta here. So that's omega a b i. So again, you can define in terms of the Christopher symbol, but the definition is half of g z and um, lib bracket of FA, FB, and EI. So that kind of measures the, um, how much um, horizontal distribution fluctuate in vertical direction. I mean, that's what it means, the uh, integrability in terms of the, well, in the sense of uh, Frobenius, basically. So that's the definition of the uh, integrative curvature tensor. So this is the uh, um, integrative curvature tensor, and mean curvature um, covector is very useful to determine the whether um, eigenvalues of the Laplacian on the base manifold and top manifold, how they can interact or how they can uh, change through the uh, remanence immersion. So that's the main theme here. So the, a few uh, remarks um, is that, um, so we say that, um, well, from the definition that you can derive that if you have mean curvature covector C theta zero, then um, each fiber is minimum submanifold, basically, you know, on the uh, total uh, manifold um, Z. And um, Ilse and Samson back in the 60s showed that if the remote summation pi is a harmonic map, if and only if the, the fibers are minimal, so that's kind of related to the, uh, um, minimizing the uh, energy functional and stuff, and that's the uh, definition of um, harmonic map, and that's what they did in back in the 60s. And uh, as I said, um, for the definition, the omega integrality tensor is zero if and only if the horizontal distribution is integrable. Okay. And liberal notation is that um, dz and dy, they'll be um, exterior derivative, and the delta y and delta z, they're going to be adjoint operators corresponding to the, uh, this exterior derivative. And uh, now I'm going to define the uh, twisted exterior derivative, um, d phi, if you have a smooth function phi, say, on y, then I just put the uh, conformal factor um, before and after the uh, just ordinary exterior derivative. So exponential minus phi and d and exponential phi. So that's going to be the uh, twisted exterior derivative. And um, delta phi, I'm going to put the <coughs> you know, to make it adjoint to this um, d phi. So we have a, another conform factor, but with change of sign. So exponential phi first and delta, uh, which is the, so delta is the um, adjoint of exterior derivative of d, and exponential minus phi, so that's the uh, um, adjoint operator. And, and I'm going to define the Witten Laplacian um, to be d phi, delta phi, plus delta phi, d phi. So ordinary just um, scalar, I mean, just Laplacian is just d times delta plus delta times d, right? And um, basically, you change the um, these derivatives uh, w using the, some smooth function. So that's the uh, what Witten Laplacian is. Um, the name comes from the uh, Edward Witten's um, arguments regarding the uh, supersymmetry. I think it's uh, back in 1980. Eight or eighty-seven, something like that. So his papers on the supersymmetry and more theory he introduced the, uh, this twisted um, exterior derivative, and uh, used that, you know, to kind of have some result about supersymmetry. So physicists call this function smooth function phi um, a dilaton, and that's one of the uh, um, common kind of a terminology they use when the sort of um, people working with general relativity, for example. But um, here, I'm not going to talk about anything about that here. Just 
I just adopted the uh, definition of Witten Laplacian and I'm just doing the spectral geometry here basically. Right, so in order to do some computation, I'm going to denote the, uh, say, um, exterior multiplication by P form sigma to the sum form alpha is just that. So I'm just basically doing the wedge product here, okay? And, um, and again, interior multiplication int sigma is the just a joint operation of the exterior derivative here. So this is just a um, duality um, relation between exterior multiplication and interior multiplication. And then you're going to have some computation relations. Say, if you have exterior derivative multiplication twice, then you can swap the order but with a change of sign. And um, same with the interior multiplication. If you're doing the uh, sigma A and sigma B, which are some P forms, then if you swap the order, then you're going to have the change of sign here, okay? And uh, if you mix the exterior derivative and the multiplication and the interior multiplication, then um, if you basically sum them up, say so exterior multiplication sigma A times interior multiplication sigma B, and then if you basically swap the order of that plus of the change of the uh, order, then you'll have a delta AB, okay? And then if you do just you know simple computation, you can show that um, if you have a the linear, linear isometry here, well, I mean, that's the just uh, remain summation I'm talking about, and then that basically commute with uh, a this twisted um, extreme uh, derivative, because uh, d phi is just d plus exterior multiplication of d phi, and then a pullback of pi basically just um, goes through, and then you can just basically change the order, and then obviously you have to change the function and to be pulled back by a uh, remnant motion pi. So you will have the uh, um, d or d phi commute with the uh, um, pullback of phi. And can you say the same with the uh, um, is adjoint? Apparently not. So this delta or delta phi does not commute with uh, um, pi upper star and pullback of pi. And um, Peter Gilkey, Park and uh, Lee uh, back in the 90s um, with a lo lot of uh, information in a book in um, Spectral Geometry, Remanence Emotions and Gromov Lawson Conjecture published in 99 they introduced um, um, these two operators here so what it is is this omega here if you look at it if you, you have um, integrability tensor uh, times extreme multiplication on the vertical direction and uh, you have the uh, interior multiplication in horizontal directions and another uh, interior multiplication in horizontal direction. So essentially the um, interior multiplication is just killing that um, the part. So you basically kill the two horizontal parts and then um, multiply by the horizontal part. So that's what this um, omega does. And uh, this kepta theta does is that um, it's interior multiplication over theta, um, the being capture covector which I defined before, which is the um, basically um, Christoph symbol gamma i i a times um, f upper a. So that's the uh, horizontal kind of a dis um, belongs to the horizontal dis distribution. So basically, this basically kills the one of the horizontal direction and plus this omega. So that's what this uh, capital theta does, and then. They show that um, basically delta and uh, pi, a pullback of pi, um, commute with a difference of this operator here times the pullback of pi. So that's what they showed. And basically, you can show the exact same things for the uh, twisted Laplacian without too much difficulty. So that's the um, lemma I'm going to talk about. So, yeah, so you will have again uh, this adjoint operator with the uh, pullback minus pullback of the uh, adjoint operator is this kepta theta which I just defined now and the pullback and using this you can also show that difference between the uh, Laplacian and the pullback of the pi um, have the difference of um, twisted differential 
times kappa theta pi star and theta and twisted uh, derivative and then pullback of pi. So that's the kind of um, things you can do. Um, and you're just simply using the definition of what um, this differential d and its adjoint delta does. It's simply just that in terms of the exterior multiplication and internal multiplication and the covariant derivative. So here you have exterior multiplication in the vertical direction and then differentiate in the vertical directions and also doing the same with the horizontal direction here and um, for the it adjoint, you just change it to the exterior multiplication to the interior multiplication. So that's all you do, basically. And uh, basically, rest of the uh, computation is followed from the uh, uh, just definition of the this twisted um, differentials and its adjoint, basically. So it's a simple computation here. Um, and um, yeah, so that's I'm going to skip the uh, this proof here. I mean, this is simply the uh, use. So if you have the first part, basically then you basically put it back to the uh, definition of the Witte Laplacian here. So that's uh, the basically twisted Laplacian and that's the uh, the um, adjoint part and the adjoint part and then you have that basically. So this is a uh, simple computations I'm doing. And um, I'm going to use the notation here that um, chapter E um, lambda um, twisted Laplacian and PY, meaning that um, space of eigen P form with respect to the uh, with Laplacian with eigenvalue lambda. So that's the, my notation I'm going to use. And I would say eigen form is a preserved if you have the uh, pullback of the um, some eigen forms in down below on the base manifold. And if you pull it back on the total manifold, if that's also eigenform, then I would say the eigenform is preserved uh, through the uh, remanence immersion. So that's the angle to use the, uh, as uh, some definition for the um, preservation. Okay. And the standard example is the Hopf vibration. I mean, yesterday um, a lot of speakers talk about Hopf, Hopf manifold and Hopf vibration, and this is again very useful when you're doing this explicit computation. So I'm going to use the uh, GN to be a standard metric on the sphere. And then I'm going to use this, this standard Hopf vibration. So from S3 to S2, but um, instead of just using the um, G2 here, I just put the uh, quarter here in order to make it uh, linear isometry. So I scaled it um, by quarter down below so that um, what you have on the base manifold is exactly the same as the horizontal. Um, distribution on the S3. So that's why I have this scaling factor. And so obviously this is um, S1 principal bundle, so principal circle bundle. And uh, this is the ruminous summation. If you just write down this, what whole vibration does is that um, 2x0, x2 plus 2x1, x3, sorry, that has to be x1 here, 2x1, x2, and the um, rest of it is just the uh, um, square of first two minus square of uh, um, last two, okay? Then if you just uh, regard the uh, uh, S3 as a um, just unit sphere in the um, Quaternions H um, spanned by IJK, obviously IJK is a standard the, uh, um, just notation for the Quaternion, so I squared equals minus one and IJ equals K and blah blah and rest of the bits. And then just write down this um, some point X on the S3 to be um, spanned by one ijk, so x0 plus x1 times i plus x2 times j plus x3 times k, so, and if you do that, and uh, if you just write down this zeta 1x to be um, x multiplied by i on the left, and the zeta 2 to be a uh, multiplication of um, x by j, and again, Theta three to be multiplication of x um, multiplied by k. Then you'll have a um, also number basis for R four by um, x and zeta one, zeta two, and zeta three. Um, and then you'll also have also number a frame for the uh, tangent bundle of the 
as 3. Um, so you can regard this uh, zeta 1 to be, say, uh, d by dx1 and d by dx2, d by dx, um, um, x3. And um, you'll have, uh, obviously, dual core frames on the tangent and bundle of the 3 sphere. Okay? And uh, if you did more split computation, then you can write down in terms of the, uh, this d by dx, x0, d by dx1. Um, so zeta1 is minus of these, and then you can show that um, the bracket of the zeta2 and zeta3 is minus two times of the, the first one, and you will have uh, some commuting relations, basically, here. And then using that, you can also show that um, it's duals of zeta upper 1 and zeta upper 2, zeta upper 3, um, and you have d zeta 1 is 2 times um, zeta 2 wedge product with uh, um, zeta 3. So this is two form. And this, this will be quite useful later when we talk about the constructing explicit example. And um, if I just write down the standard coordinates on, say, um, R3 by um, y0, um, y1, and y2, then it's volume form, um, volume, two, volume 2 forms on the um, S2, uh, where the uh, quarter uh, scaling factor can be written in this form. So this is the volume element of the uh, S2, um, is, so quarter times y0, um, dy1, wedge product of dy2, and just commute it in, in the indices, then you can show that um, this pullback of this um, volume form can be written in terms of the zeta two, zeta upper two, and zeta upper three, basically, and which is precisely um, half of the uh, d zeta, the zeta one, and with a little bit of some computation, you can show that that's actually the um, half a uh, pullback of Kupcher two form. So Kupcher two form is coming from the Kupcher one form, which is defined when you have some unitary um, connections. So if you have a section small s, and now that small um, s is the Kupcher one form times um, the section s, and um, Kupcher two form is just simply defined by um, yeah, differential of Kupcher one form. So that's what it is. And um, so here, what I want to say is the uh, the standard Hopf vibration. If you pull back the uh, a volume element of S2, then that's precisely um, half of pullback of Kupcher 2 form by Riemann summation. So that's the, uh, one of the things I'm going to use later. So first of all, the uh, just rigid rigidity theorem on the uh, Laplacian on functions. Okay. So if you have a Riemann summation, and um, if you pull back the um, eigenfunction f with uh, eigenvalue lambda. And then, and also, if you assume that the pullback of the function is also some eigenfunction, then those eigenvalues has to be the same. On to, so this is the result on the uh, um, Laplacian on functions, okay? And just that's simply using the uh, what we had before that um, difference between the uh, um, Laplacian um, when you apply the pullback on before and after the Laplacian is just the, uh, this uh, operator I introduced before, this capital theta time differential of the pullback of the f, and you can basically show that simply using the, choosing the uh, maximum points and blah, blah, basically. So that's the, uh, again, quite follows from the uh, um, lemma which I mentioned before. So, um, theorem is that um, if you have the uh, eigenfunctions on the uh, um, on base manifold, and that's and basically Laplacian or twisted Laplacian commute with the uh, this remainder motions um, is that same as saying that um, the fibers of remainder motion is uh, minimal, basically, which means that um, the theta small theta is zero. The same as that this Laplacian um, commute, so. Can you do the same with the uh, um, eigen p forms? And yes, you can do that, but with a, a little bit of an extra terms, you know, pop up. So, in order to do that, or in order to um, have some examples, 
I just have uh, some fiber product here. So fiber product is that um, if you have a 2 log plus 7 pi 1 and pi 2 from uh, u1 and u2 to y, then um, fiber product is defined by um, if you have the um, pairs of uh, the points have the same values at down under by remnant submersion. So pi 1 u1 equals pi 2 u2. Then the collection of those uh, pairs, that's going to be a fiber product. And um, uh, submersions from the, um, the fiber product to the uh, y is um, simply just defined by, um, well, by the, the values of the same value they take. So pi 1 u1 and pi 2 u2, when, when they have same, then that's the definition of the, uh, um, this um, submersions. And the sigma i here is uh, sigma 1, 2, that is just natural projection, so no worries whatsoever. And um, vertical distribution with this fiber product is just simply the uh, um, uh, sum, direct sum of the horizontal distribution and each part. So that's very naturally defined. And um, well, again, the horizontal distribution is also going to complement defined to be um, this way, basically. Okay. So, and we define the uh, uh, metric on the uh, this fiber product W to be also going to make the everything also going to basically uh, to make sense, and that's that's what this means basically. And then um, again, curve, mean curvature covector and in integrability uh, tensor that naturally defined basically just add up the uh, each component, and that's all. And um, then what you can have is that. Um, if you have um, some eigen p form um, phi and the pullback of eigen form by pi i is also eigen p form with uh, um, eigen value lambda plus epsilon i, then the uh, pullback of this eigen p form phi by this um, uh, remanent submersion of the fiber product is also eigen p form, and then you basically add up those two differences. See, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. So basically the um, eigenvalue increases basically. Okay? They cannot decrease basically. That's the whole point. Yeah. And then using this basically um, you can have the uh, um, eigenvalues increases by the remaining summation. That's what I mean by here that uh, if you have eigen p form with a lambda and if you also assume that the pullback of the p form is eigenvalue then um, the eigenvalue in total manifold is greater than or equal to the uh, the one down below, basically. Okay. So um, I'll probably skip this, and then I probably yeah want to say this. So for the whole vibration, um, you can show that um, this volume element on S two has the zero eigenvalue and the pullback of that volume form is also eigen 2 form but with the eigenvalue 4 basically so this is the explicit um, examples of um, case that you can have the eigenvalues with the increases um, through the remaining summation um, but the one of the uh, open problems in this field is that which I'm mainly interested in which I'm doing uh, currently is that um, you don't know about whether eigenvalue can change or not for eigen one form. Everything is uh, fine for the uh, um, two form or higher, but um, for the eigen one form, there's an example of whether you can show the such a things happen or not. So, so one of and this is the uh, some bit of nasty or quite strong conditions you need to have um, if you want to show that. Um, Eigen, eigen form and pullback of eigen form is whether it's eigen, what kind of eigen value it has. You have some nasty conditions here, but um, again, this is an extension of the uh, the work by Peter Gilkey, and I'm just following that moment. So, anyway, I'll stop here. Thank you. Yeah, is there a question or comment?